Hi everyone. Welcome to this video on getting started with the Syncfusion Flutter Range Slider. In this video, you will see how to add the Syncfusion Flutter Sliders package to a Flutter project and add the Range Slider widget to it. After creating the Range Slider, I will explain how to set value limits, show data labels, intervals, and ticks, enable tooltips, and format the Range Slider values. Finally, I will show you how to set date time values to the range slider and show how to render a vertical range slider. First, open the VS Code editor. You can also use an IDE you prefer such as Android Studio or IntelliJ. This computer was already set up with the Flutter development environment, which allows me to run the application in mobile, web, and desktop devices. Now I can directly create a new Flutter project. Open the command palette and create a new Flutter project. Choose a folder to create the project in. Name the project My Flutter App. VS Code creates the Flutter project for you. Run this application in the Android simulator. You can also use the terminal to run the project. You can see the application with a button widget at the bottom and a text widget at the center. When you click the button, the click count is updated in the text widget. Now, let me show you how to add a range slider in this app replacing the text and button widgets. First, I need to import the Syncfusion Flutter Sliders package from the pub.dev website. So, open the pub spec YAML file and declare the dependency Syncfusion underscore Flutter underscore sliders using the latest version. When you save the file, VS Code runs the command Flutter pub git to download the package. The download is now complete. Next, open the main.dart file. Import the sliders.dart library so that you can use the range selector widget in this file. Let's write the range slider related code within the my homepage state class. So, remove the code in the my homepage state class for the sake of clarity. Override the build method and within the build method, return a safe area widget to render the range selector within the usable area. To its child, set a scaffold widget so that you can set the material design to your application. To the scaffold's body, set the SF range slider widget. Here you can notice that the SF range slider requires the values property and unchanged callback. So, I will set the values property first in the SF range slider. Define a field of type SF range values and store the start and end values of the range slider. I set the start value as 0.3 and the end value as 0.7. In the SF range slider set the value property with the newly created field. You can also set the value of type date time. I will explain the datetime data type later in this video. Next, I need to set the unchanged callback with a function receiving a parameter that holds the new values when the range slider is changed manually. Using the setState method, set the values field with the parameter field so that the value will be updated to the range slider widget. Sorry, I need to end the statement here. Now everything is set. I restart the application. You can see the provided values set in the range slider. The default values of the min and max properties of the SF range slider are 0.0, .0 and 1.0 respectively. Let me change them now. I set the value field start value as 20.0 and the end value as 50.0. In the SF range slider, I set the min value as 0.0 and the max value 100.0 and then I restart the application. You'll notice the value has been changed. Next, I'll enable labels so that you can see the min and max values in the range slider. Set the show labels property with the value true. Save the file. You can see the labels are displayed in the slider. You can show intervals on the range slider by setting the interval property with the desired value. I set the interval as 20 and save the file, and you can see the intervals displayed in the range slider. You can also show ticks by enabling the show ticks property. The values in the range slider can also be formatted. To do so, first I need to import the Intel package. In the SF range slider, set the number format property with the class number format by passing the parameter with the string dollar symbol. After saving the file, you can see the values are formatted with the dollar symbol. I can show tooltips by setting the enable tooltip property with the value true. Now, dragging the slider bar, you can see the tooltip tell us the value selected in the range slider. Next, let me show you how to set datetime values in the range slider. First, I remove the values field parameters and set datetime values to it. Since they are a dynamic type parameters it accepts both double and datetime values. 
Next, set the min property with a date time value and do the same for the max property. I changed the interval value from 20 to 2 so that the range slider will display the interval as 2 years. Next, I need to set the date interval type for the range slider. I can set the date interval type as days, hours, minutes, months, seconds, or years. I set it as years. I need to format the values as years too. To do so, I remove the number format property since this is outside the scope of our example, add the date format property, and set the value with the date format class's Y constructor. Now, I'll restart the application. You can see the date time values are displayed in the range slider. When I drag the slider bar, the tooltip also displays the year values. Now, let me show you how to create a vertical range slider. In the SF range slider widget, use the vertical constructor so that the vertical range slider will be created. All the properties are supported by the vertical range slider too. Now, restart the application. You can see the range slider is rendered vertically. Let's see how the same code works in a web browser. I'll stop the application, change the device name to Chrome, and run the application. You can see the range slider is exactly as it was before, only in the Google Chrome browser this time. Finally, let me show you how this app works on the desktop. Change the device to Windows and run the application. You can see the range slider in a system window. That's it. Let me summarize the main points of this video. You saw how to add the Sync Fusion Flutter range slider widget to a Flutter project. You learn how to set value limits, show data labels, intervals, and ticks, enable tooltips, and format the range slider values. Finally, you saw how to set datetime values in the range slider and how to render the range slider vertically. You can download this working example from the GitHub link and documentation link in the video description below. You can also check whether you are eligible for our community license, which gives you a free license key to use our Flutter products. If you found this video useful, click the like button and subscribe to our channel to get notifications about new videos. Thanks for watching.